Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Welcome and thank you for joining us today for the inauguration of our 11th president, Dr. Dan Hakoi. Please silence your cell phones at this time. We ask that you please stand as we welcome today's processional. Leading today's processional is senior faculty member, Mr. Greg Gillis. Representing the academic community, Mr. Louis Spiro, the College at Brockport. Dr. Ethel Petru, University at Buffalo. Reverend, Reverend James Mahar, Niagara University. Mr. John Hurley, Canisius College. Dr. Melanie Perot, Buffalo State College. Dr. Jack Connell, Houghton College. Dr. Kristen Popo, Alfred State College. Dr. Kenneth Maker, Madai College. Dr. Bassam Deeb, Trocare College. Dr. Todd Oldham, Monroe Community College. Dr. William Murray Beto, Niagara County Community College. Dr. Robert Nye, Finger Lakes Community College. Dr. Julie Gedro, SUNY Empire State College. For the Board of Trustees of SUNY Erie Community College, please welcome Dr. Timothy Callen, Mr. Leonard Lenahan, Ms. Denise Wilson, Mrs. Susan Swartz, Mrs. Kate Massiello. Our distinguished guests, SUNY Trustee Mrs. Eunice Lewin, Pastor Larry Donaldson, College Senate President Colleen Quinn, Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown, Distinguished Speaker Mrs. Dottie Gallagher, Erie County Executive Mark Pollenkars, Board of Trustee Chairman Dennis Murphy, SUNY, SUNY Senior Vice Chancellor for Community Colleges Johanna Duncan Portier, Erie County Legislative Chairman Peter Savage, Student Government President Rebecca Krakowiak. And finally, the 11th president of SUNY Erie Community College, Dr. Dan Hakoi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inauguration of SUNY Erie Community College's 11th president, Dr. Dan Hokoy. I now declare the investiture in session. Please remain standing for the posting of the colors by United States Coast Guard, Sector Buffalo, and the singing of the national anthem by SUNY Erie student Priscilla Green.
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. We ask that you please remain standing as the colors are retired. And our invocation is offered by Reverend James Mahar, President of Niagara University. Please bow your heads, open your hearts, and let us all pray for God's blessing. God of everlasting life, we thank you for your wondrous gift of life. We gather as your family and ask you to send your spirit upon Dr. Dan Hokoy and the community of Erie County Community College. We ask, Lord, that you grant him vision, which is grounded in you, remembering the words of your prophet Isaiah, who says, where there is no vision, the people will surely perish. May Dr. Hokoy and this community live in a vision through which this community flourishes. Grant him divine wisdom, as the Qumran reminds us, when leaders seek your wisdom, Benefits overflow. We as well are reminded by the Talmud, the truly wise, the truly wise one seeks to learn from all. Grant him the courage to persevere in learning, in growth, and always to seek your eternal counsel. May his vision, wisdom, and leadership lead this community of learners to new heights, always knowing that the greatest gift we can impart to anyone is the gift of education. Bless this community of faculty, administration, staff, campus workers, and students. And may all of us remember our education must benefit the common good of our society and our region with a particular concern, as Jesus reminds us, for the least of our brothers and sisters. And we ask all of this in your holy name for you live forever and ever. Amen.
At this time, we would also like to recognize and thank for joining us Buffalo Controller Mark Schroeder, New York State Assemblyman Ray Walters, Erie County Legislator Tom Loughran, Erie County District Attorney John Flynn, and Buffalo Councilman Ulysses Mingo. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Dennis Murphy, Chairman of the SUNY Erie Community College Board of Trustees. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the inauguration of SUNY Erie Community College's 11th president, Dr. Dan McCoy. I'm representing my fellow trustees. There are 10 of us today, of which we greatly appreciate you participating in this 11th uh, excuse me, inauguration process. We welcome foundation board members, colleagues, friends, family, educators, business professionals, elected officials, and students from all forms of different walks of life. We are truly happy, fortunate, and blessed that you're all here today. Our college has seen significant change in the past months. And that is a testament to Dr. Hakoi's resilience and his incredible passion for ensuring our students have a quality education. And change will continue at this institution for the betterment of students in our region. We'd like to begin the program with greetings to the President. On behalf of the SUNY Board of Trustees, please join me in welcoming Dr. Eunice Lewin to say a few words. Trustee Lewin. Good afternoon, distinguished faculty, staff, students, families, elected officials, and guests. I'm honored to be here on behalf of the State University of New York Board of Trustees and delighted to participate in the investiture of the next president of Erie Community College, Dr. Daniel Hockhoy. As a longtime Buffalo resident, I am deeply invested in the future of this region. A new presidency is a tremendous opportunity to enrich a college with new ideas and new leadership. It is an opportunity to make change, and in doing so, to move both the institution and the community forward. Buffalo is in the midst of a major renaissance. The long neglected waterfront is being transformed. Investors and young professionals are returning to the city. Property values are on the upswing. Whether this economic revitalization is short-lived or a long pathway to economic growth, it largely depends upon how broad and inclusive the impact is. ECC holds the key to broad, inclusive opportunity for diverse constituencies in the region. The opportunity to become certified in a trade, to earn a degree that prepares you for a career, and adapt to the changing workplace throughout lifelong learning. These opportunities can only be seized when students have the resources they need to succeed. Our student body is diverse. Some are ready for the rigor of strong academic program. Some students arrive at ECC underprepared for the rigor demands of a college-level curriculum. 
Many are food insecure or forgo their own security to provide for their families. Many do not have the mentors and advisors who can help them to navigate educational pathways. Each of these individuals has the potential to reinvent the world we live in, to help drive Buffalo Renaissance, to demonstrate excellence. I had the privilege this morning of meeting some of these students. Look at what education has done for the people in the room. Behind me sits a man, once a refugee to this country, who is preparing to be installed as the next president of this college. I stand before you as a Cuban American woman who has been incredibly blessed to be a trustee of the State University of New York Board of Trustees. Many of us come from modest backgrounds and started with very little. However, the education that we receive allow us to accomplish the dreams that we could have never imagine. We are examples that highlight the critical role SUNY institutions play in our society and New York State. I know firsthand I am a proud graduate at SUNY University at Buffalo. Our colleges and universities enable vast number of citizens to live their best lives. The State University of New York make possible untold opportunities that we must see and seize. President Hakoi has come to SUNY with a strong higher education background and experience that has prepared him to lead every community college into the future. He has over 20 years of experience in academic leadership ensuring he will bring that level of excellence needed at this time. Dr. Hakoi, I charge you as the 11th president of every community college to offer our students this gift. I have no doubt that our students will experience unprecedented growth and success under your leadership, Eri is in good hands. Congratulations, Dr. Hakal. Thank you, Mrs. Lewin, for the wonderful remarks, one of those relationships we hold high in regard at the college. As our sponsor for the county coming up is our next speaker, Erie County Executive Mark polling cards to share some remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure as the elected representative of the people, the 925,000 plus people of Erie County to welcome you here today to offer, of course, distinguished greetings to those faculty, staff, alumni, uh, as well as, of course, the students of SUNY Erie and all of our guests to welcome you to what truly is one of the most important aspects that we have in the community, which is this incredible college that is available for all, whether you happen to live in the city or any of the suburbs with our two campuses in the northern portion as well as in the southern portion and, of course, the city campus. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here today with the investiture of Dr. Dan Hakoy. I had the privilege to actually be part of the search committee to find the next president for, at the time, we were calling it ECC because it had always been called ECC. And it was an exhaustive process. And I felt with the rest of the members of the search committee as well as the board of the trustees that we found the right individual to be the next president of ECC. 
Well, I can tell you after his first year in office, we did get the right president for SUNY Erie because of the changes that he's made during this period to ensure that people understand the importance of this institution and the importance of what it means not just to the people who attend college here, the faculty and staff that work here, but what it truly means to the greater community to have an institution of higher education here in our community that's available to all. So on behalf of the, the 925,000 plus citizens of Erie County, I want to welcome Dr. Dan Hakoy and his family and friends to this incredible event that I know he has certainly been waiting for, but moreover to let the people of this community know that with the leadership that we've already seen from Dr. Hakoy, I know that truly as they say with ECC, or as we now call it, SUNY Erie, you can start here and go anywhere, and that is proof of how good this community is and what we will be in the future. So congratulations, Dr. Hakoy, and I know under your leadership, not only will SUNY Erie, of course, be here, but it will go to places we haven't thought of just yet. Congratulations and best wishes. Thank you, County Executive Poland Cars, and it's been a great journey um, since Dan has landed to, and a pleasure to work with the county and the legislature and the executive branch. To that end, I'd like to invite the county legislature, Peter Savage, the chair of the Erie County Legislature, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's certainly my honor to be here today with so many distinguished guests in higher education and government in our community uh, for this historic um, occasion. Um, as the county executive alluded to, SUNY Erie is a, is a partner in county government, but we see it as so much more than a partnership. This college is an anchor institution of our community, and for so many, it offers the hope and opportunity that they need to get the leg up in life. And getting to know President Coy uh, since he's returned to Western New York and observing his leadership style, what's impressed me most is his creative thinking, his forward, progressive understanding that we are going through a transition. And although transitions can often be challenging as they are for community colleges all across the state, with transition comes opportunity. And we've not only rebranded our school's name, but we've rebranded that vision. We've rebranded that vision to understand that this is more than just a place of education. It plays a pivotal role in our economy. And it's essential that we not only connect our students to the jobs of today, but prepare them for the new economy of tomorrow. And would President McCoy recognizes that we have so many partners and, and so many opportunities for collaboration in making that vision a reality. And on behalf of the Erie County Legislature, I extend our commitment to continue to be a partner as we continue to grow this great institution and provide the opportunity that so many of our young people need in this community. So congratulations, thank you for your service, and we look forward to working with you uh, in the future. Congratulations. Thank you, Chairman Savage. Next, we'd like to invite the mayor of the city of Buffalo, Mayor Byron Brown. As you know, Erie Community College reaches out to many, many constituencies. But at, in the top of our list, we have to understand that the relationship with the city of Buffalo and its citizens, specifically its citizens in the K-12 world, are so important to our future. So I'd like to ask the mayor to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chairman Murphy. Good afternoon. I'm honored to be part of the inauguration of Dr. Dan Hakoy as the 11th president of SUNY Erie Community College. For more than 70 years, Erie Community College has been a key educational asset for the residents of Buffalo and Erie County. With more than 100 associate degree programs, ECC has opened the door to enhanced career options as well as serving as a stepping stone to four-year college or university for so many people in our community and beyond. 
My administration has been extremely proud to partner with ECC and Say Yes Buffalo to have Buffalo public school students attend the Say Yes Summer Success Academy at the ECC City Campus. Through the $1.8 million the city has contributed to the Say Yes program, students receive a stipend which allows them to get paid while they are being nurtured and prepared for college success right here. I am pleased that Dr. Hakoi has demonstrated in his past roles and already as ECC's president that he shares my vision and our community vision for a diverse, equitable, and inclusionary Buffalo in Erie County. Dr. Hakoi, I congratulate you and your family on this very special day and look forward to your leadership of this great institution and working closely with you. I also thank ECC for everything it does for the people of the city of Buffalo. Thank you, Mayor. Speaking of ECC and what it does, I would like to introduce you now to the College Senate President, Colleen Quinn, who has to say a few remarks reflecting Erie Community College, its faculty, and its Senate. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Murphy. Good afternoon to all the faculty, students, staff, alumni, trustees, SUNY ambassadors, and distinguished guests that are here to join us today. As Chair Murphy pointed out, my name is Colleen Quinn, and I'm an Associate Professor of Mathematics at the South Campus, but I'm also the Chair of our College Senate. It is my position in this organization that has given me the privilege to be able to speak today. The College Senate is still in its infancy at SUNY Erie but it has made some significant strides in the past two years, and much of that has to do with the leaders of this institution recognizing the importance of shared governance and its role in academic decisions and policies. In the last 10 months since Dr. Hakoi's arrival, the College Senate has made large gains in shared governance. We have had continued growth in a very positive direction with the formation of several task forces that are centered around academic missions that many faculty and staff are passionate about. The College Senate has been working with our Academic Standards Committee and the Provost's Office to form an Academic Integrity Task Force that has been working diligently with faculty, academic deans, deans of students, and students to develop policy proposals around integrity and academic freedom. The College Senate's Affordable Instructional Materials Task Force has worked with faculty, librarians, and instructional designers to develop course materials for our students that are either free or under $30. The number of sections college-wide that have these materials has grown 5% since the fall 2018 semester. We anticipate an even larger growth for the 2018-19 academic year. Thank you. Our Safety and Security Task Force has worked with our security personnel, faculty, staff, and students to work on a master plan that has campuses safer for everyone. The College Senate has worked in conjunction with our distance learning program to support Dr. Hukoi's mission of growing our distance learning program, allowing it to spread to 48 states. All of these initiatives have had one goal in mind and that is to make SUNY Erie Community College a place for all students inside and outside of Erie County to succeed. The College Senate has also worked diligently to include students in the shared governance process, ensuring their voices are included in academic decisions. All of these initiatives have been successful because of the college's commitment to shared governance. It is a new day at SUNY Erie, and it is an era of shared governance that we have been working tirelessly to achieve since before Dr. Hukoi's arrival. Shared governance has gained support 
and expanded throughout the college under his leadership. We have monthly meetings with the Senate leadership team to discuss academic policies of the college and to work together to achieve innovation and growth for our faculty and staff. Dr. Hakoi has fostered a new spirit of optimism and commitment at SUNY Erie. We are looking forward to working with him in the future to continue to promote the innovation and excellence in education that SUNY Erie provides for our community. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing those thoughts and ideas regarding your community and its faculty. Thank you. Continuing with ECC, I would like to make sure that we share with you a perspective from not only a trustee, but as the leader of student government and a student, an active student. Trustee Rebecca Krakowiak, would you mind coming up and sharing your vision? Thank you, Chairman Murphy. As a representative of the SUNY Erie student population, I'm very thankful to have Dr. Hokoy as our new president. Throughout this year, he has shown that he is not afraid to get to know our students personally and even compete with them on the basketball court. <laughs> Dr. Hokoy has also made a point to ensure that all decisions made here at SUNY Erie are student focused and he's always been willing to sit at the table with us to come up with solutions for our students' needs. Even though there will always be new problems to solve and improvements to be made, I'm confident that our students are in good hands. Congratulations, Dr. Hakoi, and I wish you the very best here at SUNY Erie. Thank you, Rebecca. Business partnerships at Erie Community and others, other areas are vitally important, in this case, to our college's strategic plan. Representing one of our partners is TIA CLEF, is Mr. Mark Sane, and would like to share a few words with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Hakoi, family, friends, trustees, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students. It's an honor to be here to celebrate this transition. My name is Mark Sane, and along with my colleagues from TIAA, we bring greetings and congratulations. Transitions represent a new set of opportunities for an institution and its constituents. In my role working with leaders, I see the impact of leaders who are facing a daunting set of challenges with grace and courage. This year, TIAA also celebrates a milestone with 100 years of service to the academic, medical, and cultural community. Founded by Andrew Carnegie, TIAA's mission is to improve the financial situation of its institutions and individual participants to and through retirement. But our 100th anniversary is not just about us. This year, we celebrate difference makers, those whom through their work and leadership are transforming their institutions, their communities, and the broader world. Dr. Hakoi, you are the kind of person we are acknowledging this year during our centennial. You've worked to improve the student experience through new programs and through applying insights and new technologies. The impact of your extraordinary leadership reaches across this campus, across this community, across this system, and maybe even across this country and around the world. TIAA has been partnering with our institutions to develop leaders in higher education for both today's and tomorrow's challenges because we see that the world is becoming even more complex, and this complexity demands a new type of leader who can engage a community and who can ignite the passion of that community to accomplish the seemingly impossible. As you've been transitioning, my guess is 
you've received lots of advice. <laughs> I could share some academic advice about leadership with you, but sometimes we find advice in the most surprising of places. Recently, I was at a middle school, which I have not been in probably for 30 years. And on the bulletin board, one of the bulletin boards of this middle school, was a series of pieces of advice from seventh graders who had gotten through their first year at the middle school and now were advising the newbies, the sixth graders at the middle school. They had lots of advice. I picked just one of them because I think it's universal for all of us, especially Dr. Hakoi Yu, who are going through transitions. This is from Hezekiah, that seventh grader with so much wisdom. Here's his advice to his peers. Hello, sixth graders. I know that you're probably worried, just like in any transition. There's nothing to be scared about. I thought I was going to get lost, but it turns out you don't have to go everywhere. Dr. Hakoi, much success in your endeavors. <laughs> and as they say in New York, Excelsior. And now I'd like to share a little advice amongst my peers by having some music to our ears. Are we ready? The vocal symphony from the Buffalo Academy for the Visual and Performing Arts, directed by Karen Saxon. Sorry, da, 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 da
one uh, about the special bond of relationship and uh, conveys our wish to the entire ECC community that your new fellowship is a long-standing and productive one. And as the proud mom of an ECC graduate, I mean it with all of my heart. <laughs> On behalf of everyone in this audience, we thank you, vocalists, and Ms. Saxon. What a way to spend a Friday afternoon. I just want to let you know, we're getting closer to that moment we formally welcome Dr. Hakoi to the SUNY Erie family. Stay tuned. Before that, today's di distinguished speaker is a well-known figure in this region. As a business leader, she has spent the better part of her career in marketing Western New York. Currently, she heads the region's largest business organization. And please join me with welcoming our keynote speaker today, the president and CEO of the Buffalo Niagara Partnership, Dottie Gallagher. Okay, that is the best opening act I have ever had. And I do not want to take a vote amongst all of you to find out if you'd rather have me sit down and bring them back out, because I know what would happen. So I, I, uh, I want to welcome Chairman Murphy, President Hakoi, members of the board, faculty, administration, students, and Dan's family here for uh, what is a really inspiring uh, afternoon. Uh, I will say I am totally inspired by the artistry of that group of, of students, and really they deserve another round of applause. They were really amazing. I sort of wish they could sing my speech because then you would remember it, but um, that's okay. I, it is really my pleasure and, and really my honor to be here for the installation of President Daniel Hakoi as the 11th president of the college formerly known as ECC. 
forgive the archaic reference, um, but old habits die hard. I actually worked here at SUNY Erie in this very building in 1984, and my first project was to coordinate the inauguration of the seventh president. So this is all a little bit of deja vu for me, and I have to say it's a whole lot easier sitting up here than it was working out there when I was, when I was here. So. In my role as president and CEO of the Buffalo Niagara Partnership, my primary job is to galvanize the private sector to improve the local economy. And that really comes down to two things, removing barriers for growth uh, through our advocacy work and fostering an environment for private sector job creation. And I am so lucky and blessed to have this job in 2018 than I would have been in 1984 when I was working here. Because in that year, that year of 1984, Buffalo's unemployment rate was a staggering 12.4%. And today we see a much different and better Buffalo. Unemployment is at 5.4% and total employment is up across all sectors. And our renaissance is real. Buffalo's real GDP has grown six times faster between 2009 and 2016 than it did between 2002 and 2007. And just look around. The landscape is changing everywhere you go. There's been $56 billion of private sector-led investment in the eight counties of western New York. So uh, President Okoye, you sort of stepped into a much easier gig, right? <laughs> I'm not so fast. We have two incredibly pressing critical issues to move this to be something that has really changed our community or just the good old days that we will remember fondly. And those two issues um, uh, SUNY Erie are in the middle of. The first is the need to improve the racial equity in our community and healing. We still suffer from concentrated poverty, which sadly has actually increased in our community nearly 7% since 2011, when our tenuous renaissance began. And perhaps most important at all, and cannot be divorced from the second issue, we need the availability of a skilled workforce. And that is where ECC, I'm sorry, SUNY Erie plays a pivotal role. We're not the only community facing this challenge. In fact, it's an issue around the country, but we have an especially large challenge here because 25% of working age adults in our community will retire over the next 10 years. And our decades of out-migration and compressed economy, meaning we held on to the jobs we had, but we really for many, many years didn't grow jobs, mean that a lot of people are going to exit the workforce at the same time. And that's gonna present a real challenge and an opportunity for for this institution. If you look at our current workforce and the strengths we already have, we have a relatively educated population. Compared to the national average, we have 3% more people with advanced degrees than elsewhere. We also have 137,000 people in this community who report that they are underemployed. What does that mean? That means that they believe that they can do more, they can be more, they can achieve more, and they are working under their capability. That's an opportunity for us. But the disconnect between the jobs that are available in our community today and in the future and the output of the education and training providers is vast. This is where the opportunity lies. And SUNY Erie is uniquely positioned and in fact is a critical factor in achieving our goal of the workforce we need for tomorrow. Many of the good paying jobs in our community over the next decade will be in our target sector industries, which include manufacturing, tourism, and healthcare, and SUNY Erie has been providing companies with graduates in all of those areas, and have placed graduates in, in companies like Moog, General Motors, National Fuel, and Praxair, just to name a few. But as I mentioned earlier, we still have very high poverty, the fourth highest in the nation. And we have more individuals with higher education degrees. So what is the challenge about getting the right people into the right jobs? We have employers clamoring for skilled workers. And too many people who live here are in or close to living in poverty. So how do we create a career ladder to create both family sustaining wages and more importantly, to build the kind of career that creates wealth for families for future generations? And let me just translate to what that really means. That somebody can buy a house, they can live in it, and they can pass it on to their children. That's what we're talking about. This is not lofty uh, Donald Trump billionaire aspirations. This is basic human rights that everyone in our community should be able to achieve. And until we do that, we will not achieve our goals of racial equity. So, so what is it that we need to do? 
Well, the Buffalo Niagara Partnership has been working and studying the issue of workforce development for about four years now and have done so with an employer-led coalition that has included members of the private sector, public sector, education and training providers, including SUNY Erie and including a number of people who are sitting on the stage behind me. Uh, and I want to thank Mike Biskevich from SUNY Erie who has been with us from the beginning of this process. Collectively, we have identified national best practices, visited other communities, and put together a strategy to move this community forward. The strategy is based on the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's talent pipeline management system, which prepares the right people for the right jobs at the right time. And it's not as simple as it may sound. Education and training systems are designed to replicate popular programs and sometimes can overflow the market in a program that's not aligned with the jobs that are actually open or jobs change and the training does not change with it. Employers are finding that more and more graduates may have the basic skills but need specialized training once they are hired. And our world is becoming far more specialized. The old model of train and pray no longer works. And academic and training providers need to be true partners meeting actual real world demands of what our specific groups of employers need when they need it. What does that mean? It means that not everyone should have to complete a two-year degree in order to get a good job. It may mean that there are work-learn programs with stackable credentials along the way that lead to a two-year degree. It means that employers need to understand that stealing someone else's guy is not a sustainable way to, to develop a talent pipeline. And it means employers need to work together to cultivate the pool of available talent. It means providing flexible opportunities for now, now for people who are considered to be working poor, people who cannot commit to longer term training but could get a stackable certification or credential to move their careers and their lives along. And this will require innovation, innovation in our systems and how we all do our work. Employers need to understand the challenges that some people who have been left behind in our community face, challenges around transportation and access, including eligibility for government assistance for training for the working poor. It's incredibly difficult for someone who is relying on a daycare subsidy, food stamps, and working a minimum wage job to have the time, energy, or ability to attend a training program. And in fact, in the ranks of our employed, the working poor are the most disadvantaged in terms of the availability of help. In order to break this cycle, uh, this will take innovative partnerships between employers and education and training providers. And this is the work we are trying to do with our coalition, Employee Buffalo Niagara. Our coalition is a coalition of the willing, and we would love to have any of you who are interested participate. It is through this lens that I want to say how fortunate our community is to have the leadership of President Hakoi. In my first meeting with our new president, it became clear to me that the status quo is unacceptable to him. He understood that to be competitive, we need to be innovative. That means afflicting the comfortable. It means listening more closely to what industry needs and to have an audacious willingness to ask the right questions and make the changes necessary to make SUNY Erie the most relevant workforce and education partner in our community. We are especially blessed to have a president who has a background in social justice issues. His interest in eradicating poverty and the work he has done in racial healing, combined with his willingness to experiment, develop pilots, to listen to employers, and I hear listen to students, listen to faculty, will create new pathways for students and new opportunities for faculty members. And this is refreshing, but it's not only refreshing, it is critical. It is critical to advance our community. In the communities around the country where we've seen employers satisfy their critical workforce pipeline needs, there are a couple of common denominators. The efforts that are bearing the most fruit are led by employers, and I don't mean employer-informed advisory councils. I mean groups of employers working together to fill a group of jobs who are willing to have an honest conversation with each other about what they actually need. And I talk about this, and I mean no disrespect, I'm Catholic, so I'm going to give myself a pass. A lot of job descriptions are written, and, and it looks like you need Jesus to fill them, when the employers would really just take Lazarus if he showed up. Okay, so. And, and, you know, communicating these very specific needs to you, to the education and training providers, and, and, and most importantly, that employers are providing honest feedback on the quality of that training and the preparation of their new employee is critical. Nationally, the successful models also include support from the public sector workforce partners, like our Workforce Investment Board, which our county executive is in charge of, and a true integrated collaboration with the community college system. 
Some of the community college uh, partners have developed innovative and specific training programs that provide credentials that may or may not lead to a two-year degree, but help people get to good jobs more quickly. And I hope that you see today what the opportunity is before all of us. And I hope you realize, like I realize even more now, after hearing the testimony, really, about President Hokoi from every 360-degree view of what we've got in our hands as an opportunity. So, so, so Dan, not to put too much pressure on you, but uh, the community is counting on you. <laughs> and um, you all are not off the hook because the community is counting on all of you too to really provide the support for the kind of leadership and innovation we need to really assume our role in the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dottie. I think amongst understanding how we can be a catalyst to help people have better lives, I think there's a theme here that we've all taken from each of the speakers thus far. And that's by working together, we can be better. And I think the days of silo management are done. So ladies and gentlemen, one of the primary reasons I could speak as being part of the committee to find Dan Hakoi was the fact that togetherness stood out. That doesn't mean we all sign off on each other's papers every day at school. What it means is that we listen and learn from another to make a better place. So thank you, Dottie, for bringing that forward. So now please join me in welcoming the Senior Vice Chancellor for Community Colleges for the State University of New York, Johanna Duncan Portier, and put your seat belts on, because you're going to enjoy this one. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh my god, it is so wonderful to be here for this very, I know, very, very, very special day. Um, I am here to um, join in the congratulations from Chancellor Christina Johnson and my many colleagues, many of whom are on the stage from the State University of New York across the state who are very, very excited about uh, Dan Hakoi's new presidency. Now, as I was saying to Dennis Miller uh, before we spoke, I said, this is, the, this is the piece de resistance, right? This is the investiture. So I'm only going to make just a few mark remarks, and it's going to be thank you, thank you, thank you, to which he said, thank you. <laughs> The first thank you is really to the ECC, Board of Trustees, the search committee, and the entire campus community that participated in the process. There's nothing more important than finding the right leader who is going to build on past successes and build a sustaining future. We believe Dan Hokoy has, is, is that man. The presidential search process, I was going to say, was quite rigorous. I agree with your county executive that it was actually quite um, exhausting, you know, an exhaustive process. And I think Dan Hakoi would attest to the fact that it was quite exhausting. Um, those who worked very hard on this spent long hours. For me, it was such a pleasure to be a part of the search process because I got to learn about this institution in a way I would never have learned before. The folks here are so committed to student success. The folks here work so hard to make a difference for students and, of course, to build their futures. And it is for that reason that finding the right president was truly a labor of love. The special acknowledgment, though, I have to make is to Dennis Murphy. He worked so hard leading the search process really for quite some time. And I will tell you all, he deserves a big round of applause. The second thank you is to ECC, now I guess it's SUNY Erie Community College, which is a strong institution of higher education and really the heart of this community. Truly a very, very special place where dedicated faculty and staff are making a difference for our students 
And honestly, you're making dreams come true. You know, I was so impressed with the musical interludes of the choir. I'm sure it was called something else, but those wonderful, talented uh, folks that uh, spoke, uh, sang earlier. And Priscilla, oh my god. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Now, when you read the brochure about ECC, and you know that they are offering 100 programs, and that years ago it was an institution that was very, very small, and you know now there are three campuses, and now you serve 14,000 students. But it doesn't really come alive until you talk to the students. Trustee Lewin mentioned that we had the opportunity to speak to a group of students today. Um, I happen to, um, I won't tell you where I ran into Priscilla, but it was in the ladies' room when I was combing my hair. And she was practicing. So I heard this voice of an angel singing. So I asked her what was her major? What did I think? I was, thought it was music, right? No, this is a woman who is, is, a, is studying to be a paralegal and told me she's gonna have her own law firm to keep families together. And I... And it's those stories, and it's those, those lives that are being changed because of this institution. And for that, I thank each and every one of you for really making this possible, because it isn't about any one person or any one thing. It is about a group of folks. And thank God you have found a leader who recognizes that. And that leads me to the third thank you. I want to say thank you to you, Dan. Um, to my friend and colleague, Thank you for joining the SUNY family, and I thank Marsha as well. Dan may not have told you, but when we were thinking about him actually accepting the job, I said, does um, Marsha know what she's getting into? Um, does she know about all the snow in, in Buffalo? And Dan smiled, and he said, well, I haven't talked to her about that yet. <laughs> he said, but I know she's always very supportive of my career, and so it, it will be a marriage made in heaven, no pun intended. So I thank you so much for joining the SUNY family. We are so proud to have found a talented, forward-thinking leader who understands what it takes to make Erie one of the best community colleges in the country by making a difference for students. I asked some people, you know how when you, you have folks who you're supposed to talk to about someone? Those are the folks I don't talk to. I was walking around the campus and I asked a few people what did they think of Dan Hakoi as their president. They said, oh my God, we love him. Uh, one said, down to earth, this is a collection, down to earth, welcoming, builds encouragement. He's like a real person. And the last said, you wouldn't know he's a president. We really like him. <laughs> Dan, there's no doubt that you are accepting the challenges ahead and we have no doubt that your tenure will be defined by growth, opportunity and world class and as trustee Lewin said excellence and so now thank you thank you thank you my three thank yous and we move to the inauguration uh, to the investiture and with that I would like to ask trustee Lewin if she would join me at the podium this is going to be a very special investiture trustee Lewin is going to read the remarks where's the point before I read the remarks, I would like, uh, where's the? We've got to have the blame. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. I would like a chairman of the board, uh, Dennis Murphy, county executive, Pauline Cards, and Mayor Brown to join me at the podium. And Dan Hakoi, would you join and us of as course. Well? Dan. Okay. Dr. Dan Hakoi. You have the most important privilege and responsibility of leading Erie Community College to the fulfillment of its great promise as an institution of higher learning and an integral partner in the region. As Chief Executive Officer, you are assigned all powers, duties, and responsibilities appropriate to the post. We are confident that under your leadership, this institution pursuing the highest tradition of teaching, scholarship, and public service 
will continue its dedication to this region, to the state, the nation, and the world. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, I hereby present you, friends of the college, the 11th president of Erie Community College, Dr. Dan Hakoi. Thank you, Eunice, and thank you to all our speakers today for your very touching and moving words. I feel completely humbled to my heart. So let's give all our speakers a big round of applause, please. Good afternoon. Welcome, and thank you all for coming. It appears that neither wind nor rain will keep you away from free food. <laughs> so you are people after my own heart. I'm truly honored to be joined today by the SUNY Senior Vice Chancellor and SUNY Trustee, as well as so many educators, elected officials, and business leaders. Your presence today is testament to the sense of partnership, renewal, and optimism we feel at SUNY Erie Community College. I would like to thank the Investiture Committee without whose dedication over the past few months today would not be possible. <laughs> Trustees Kate Maffiello, Susan Schwartz, Rebecca Krakowiak, as well as college staff members Gail Frazier, Paul Amana, Mike Pekevich, and especially Paula Sandy. I want to express my deepest gratitude I want to express my deepest gratitude for your work putting this amazing celebration together. And I especially like the bling, thank you. <laughs> so let's please join me in giving the Investiture Committee another round of applause. I want to tell the story of the college I've come to know over the past 10 months. It's a story of ups and downs, good and bad, and even some ugly. As with every story, it's always best to start at the beginning. You all know the saying, first impressions are everything. When I arrived at Erie Community College, it was clear that despite being the second largest college in Western New York, with over 12,000 students across three campuses, its reputation would be an obstacle to its success. Prospective students and the employers who might hire our graduates viewed ECC as Easy Credit College, a glorified high school at best. This reputation impacted our ability to attract students, to retain talent, and to partner with local companies. This impression negated any success we actually had. The words that I most often heard to describe the college were inefficient and dysfunctional. Now, where did these perceptions come from? It's no secret that ECC has struggled with its finances. Over the past six years, the college balanced its budget on the backs of our students with tuition and fee increases in addition to dipping into its reserves. We needed to improve our brand, and that had to start from within. Perception is reality, and the reality 
needed to be different. We needed to change our image by being a different college, a new ECC. I wanted to leverage my arrival to, communi to communicate both internally and externally that we were changing. Our own internal culture supported a good enough environment, but is good enough what we want to provide our students or how we want to be known? Change, although uncomfortable, was and is necessary. And I wanted the business community to feel we were a new organization with which to partner. We capitalized on people's curiosity about the new president to present a different image. An important part of creating a new impression is changing the image that people associate with us. So, we asked our college community to design some new images to represent us. These logos, I believe, present our college in fresh and interesting ways. Who we are as a brand is merely the sum of how people experience us. So we needed to fundamentally change the experience, both in reality and in image. One of our architecture students, Zach Skinner, designed this clever retro logo, which highlights the year of our founding to signify almost 75 years of impact. Now, our facilities are in desperate need of repair but a lack of resources prevent us from making big changes. So we focused on the touch points people come in contact with. A few coats of paint and new uniforms for our security and facility staff were the beginning of changing people's experience. One touch point for students is their very first semester. So we began to focus on imprinting, or the emotional bonding by faculty and staff to students during this critical period, which allows students to feel supported and ensure that they reach out when they need help. Another touch point for students is the cost of their textbooks. So we emphasized the use of affordable instructional materials by our faculty. We currently offer 276 courses with instructional materials costing less than $30, <laughs> resulting in a cost savings of over $400,000 to our students. Ultimately, we launched a plan to redefine Erie as a place of efficiency, relevance, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Over the past 10 months, we have already seen a significant shift in our internal culture, as well as public perception. I wanted to lead by example. So I restructured my cabinet to create efficiencies, which resulted in a cost savings of over $600,000 to the college. Those cost savings, along with efficiencies in other areas, resulted in the first balanced budget without raising tuition and fees or using our reserves in six years. With four unions, three campuses, and multiple external stakeholders, we needed a culture that prioritized our students. So we developed the principle of students first, with which to make decisions and allocate resources. A student's first perspective puts us in a position 
to be an engine for social change and supporting our students in times of need is a big part of that. When the federal government announced its intention to end the DREAM Act, I wanted to convey support for our undocumented students. When we decided to hold a public event in support of these students, County Executive Mark Pullen Cars, along with Legislator Pat Burke and our trustees, faculty, staff, and students were right there by our side to show their support for the undocumented in our community. Another partnership with the offices of the County Executive and Buffalo's Mayor Byron Brown involved collecting supplies that were sent to Puerto Rico after the devastation of Hurricane Maria. Having been raised in a household that didn't speak English and the first in my family to go to college, it is personally important for me that we create a welcoming and inclusive environment for all students and especially for first-generation students. We recently launched a strategic plan for diversity and inclusion at SUNY Erie with the goal of giving our students the opportunity to be heard, to fully participate in campus life, and to succeed in their academic and personal lives. I am thankful we have partners like Brenda McDuffie of the Urban League, Dave Rust of Say Yes, and Clotilde Perez Bodhi Didecker of the Community Foundation to ensure that SUNY Erie actually fulfills its potential as an inclusive organization, one that truly serves the diverse communities of Western New York. Sustainability for any college today means that you need to have relevant programs. Initiated by Governor Cuomo and led by President Steve Tucker, the Northland Workforce Training Center is set to transform Buffalo's east side. <laughs> by offering degree and certificate programs, in areas of advanced manufacturing. SUNY Erie is a proud partner in providing the knowledge, skills, and qualifications that will place students in family-sustaining jobs while addressing essential local workforce needs. Workforce training is one area in which we are simply number one. With more than 4,500 courses offered annually to local employers, SUNY Erie is the region's largest provider of workforce training. <laughs> Combine that with our participation in the partnerships Employ Buffalo Niagara Initiative led by Dottie Gallagher, as well as Tom Kacharski's Invest Buffalo Niagara, SUNY Erie is a major engine for economic growth in the region. As the national pipeline of high school students diminishes, we need to look at new streams of revenue. So, we are doubling down on distance learning programs and certificates aimed at providing an easier path to higher education for working adults. <laughs> Thanks to the work of our distance learning team, we are now able to offer online courses in 48 states. <laughs> With a grandmother from Jamaica, a mother from Malaysia, a father from China, and myself from Trinidad and Tobago, I understand we may have to go outside our home country to improve our fortunes. International students represent a large, mostly untapped market for the college. 
We're giving these and other students another reason to consider us through the addition of a residential option. Through a partnership with President John Hurley and Canisius College, we will be able to give our students the full college experience. Aimed at attracting student athletes from across the country and local students who want a residential experience, as well as students from all parts of the globe, we are very excited about this new source of revenue. Our state-of-the-art STEM building and our Center for Nanotechnology are primed to train future employees for Western New York's growing science and tech-related industries. We are also launching the Statler Center for Culinary Medicine right here in North Campus. We will become the first community college in New York State to launch this innovative program. Forging new partnerships like ours with TIAA today is essential to our new business model at SUNY Erie. These partnerships will directly assist our students. We are currently in discussion with Facebook to be the first college in the country to pilot a program with their new education division. This program will give our students highly marketable skills and provide the tech industry with a much needed diverse workforce. We are also on the verge of a major gift announcement from Tesla, so stay tuned. <laughs> we are actively working on public-private partnerships with many four-year institutions as well. Our recent dual enrollment agreement for veterans and active service students with Damon College is an example of the types of partnerships we can create to attract new students and support our graduates in advancing their careers. We are developing a stronger stream of non-tuition revenue from advancement, which is uncommon for a community college. We are seeing greater investment in our students as well as increased sponsorship of the college, such as from the West Her Automotive Group. Overall, our foundation saw a 54% increase in donations this year, including Buffalo-made tablet computers from Back USA. So, we have truly moved on from the ECC of old. SUNY Erie has evolved from its former self and in turn is transforming Western New York. The faculty, staff, and administration are doing great things at SUNY Erie and telling our story is critical to changing perceptions. So we intend to communicate who we are through our students. Hi, my name is Shamara. I am a liberal arts major here at ECC. All of my classes that I'm taking here are preparing me to go to a four-year college to earn my degree in special education. The biggest thing that appealed to me about ECC was, you know, the ability to come in, get a, a quick education, um, and confidently feel that I was going to have a lot of the tools needed to, to move forward and to enter the my name is Rebecca and I'm a student in the Clinical Laboratory Technology Program. What I really like about this program is that I get to use my analytical skills to work towards a degree in a career field that really interests me. A century ago, Buffalo hosted the World Fair right here, right here in Delaware Park. U.S. President William McKinley selected this region of the country to be the showcase for innovation and prosperity in the USA. In recent years, this area has seen some struggles. But I know if we work together, we will make Western New York great again.
Thank you all for coming, and now you get to eat. Well, what you may or may not know about Dr. Hakoi <laughs> will be revealed at the reception. The, uh, uh, seriously, uh, we have in our agreements that uh, Dr. Hakoi may teach a class. And one of those classes I'm thinking of is phenomenal ECC, SUNY Erie now, storytelling. <laughs> because it's not only good to the ear, it's accurate, and that's what counts going forward. So Dr. Okoy, we want to thank you. Uh, you're an inspiration to all of us, the administration, faculty, and staff, as you were talking about. Most importantly, the students. At SUNY Erie, I'd truly like you to have you at the helm of our great institution. We look forward to a long tenure with you as our leader. Let's give one more standing ovation for Dr. Okoy, please. Thank you for your indulgence. For our closing benediction, we'd like to welcome the senior pastor from the Greater Works Christian Fellowship, Reverend Larry Donaldson. To our distinguished guests and all of you in attendance today, as we prepare to transition from this day of celebration to service in tomorrow, let us bow our heads. To our divine creator and sustainer, we have gathered here today in our very faith for the initiation of the administration and leadership of President Dan Akoy. We thank you for allowing this opportunity and we undertake this mission of this institution and its cohesive societies under the guidance of President Akoy and his administration we give thanks for the blessings of this community that have already been shown, and we look forward to what is to come. We pray for the prosperity of President Hakoi and strength in his leadership to help transition this area from what it is to what it should be. In all things, we recognize your sovereign power and acknowledge our need for your guidance. Help us live out the true meaning of brotherly love as we move forward in our endeavors and efforts to achieve a common goal, a beloved community where rich and poor alike have access to opportunity for a dignified and productive life. Where our deepest hope is that we will be helping, we will be of a helping service in a hurting world. May God bless Dr. Hakoi and his family and guide him in his administration. May the light of God shine upon him, and may God be gracious to him. May the presence of God be with you all, and may God give you all peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as to end this recessional, we've got some music for you to exit with, so enjoy.